that's another one where the common name is also the genus. Uh, so it's Calendula officinalis. And um, here I have some calendula flowers my friend grew this spring and gave me. So they're really orange. Oh, can I have a TA support moment? Yeah. You see that little ramekin over there? Mm -hmm. Can you bring that to me? Thank you. Um, so I like that you can kind of see the difference in vibrancy between these two um, as just an example of how, um, you know, dried herbs have a shelf life, right? So these I got from like a larger herbal distributor um, and I don't know when they were harvested, probably last spring, not definitely not this spring. Um, and is that pretty obvious, like how much less vibrantly orange they are versus these ones? Yeah, so these were just grown and dried and then um, stored right away. So for um, medicine making, um, I will use often like fresh wilted calendula flowers for oil infusions, or I might use dried calendula flowers that are at this level of vibrant orangeness. Um, and then for these ones, this might be something I would use for tea, um, for like a wash, or a compress, um, or maybe internally for part of like a gut tea blend, um, but I would be l less inclined to use ones that had kind of faded to this yellowness um, for like trying to get my really strong topical preparations made. And so yeah, I've always heard calendula flowers can have some variation in a garden context. They're a really awesome garden plant, um, but I've always heard the, or the orangest ones are the strongest. Um, and there will also be yellow blooms too. Um, but of course, if like that's all you have, like use the yellow ones, I'm sure it will still um, be useful. And I really love how calendula reseeds like a champ. Um, they have these like really wild seeds that look like, like dinosaur teeth or something. Um, and it flourishes with picking too. So it's like, you can, it's the most fun kind of harvest of all is like when you pick something and you know that it's helping it grow more by picking it. Um, so yeah, it will just have like a really long um, period of producing blossoms, especially if you harvest them regularly. And um, it's in medicinally, it's very warming and soothing. Calendula is antibacterial and antifungal. It heals tissues and helps with cell proliferation. So it's definitely, we're thinking about it for cuts and scrapes. It's also very soothing to inflammation. So I'll do cold compresses um, for sunburns, soaks for sprains and strains, um, cuts and scrapes. I use it a lot for diaper rash too, um, since I know there's at least one parent in the room. Um, and internally, calendula has a lot of complex uses as well. It's a reproductive antispasmodic. Um, it reduces cramps in the, in the smooth muscles. Um, and it also has some surface immune and lymph stimulating activity with a particular affinity for the chest area. Um, so that might be something of interest right now in the time of COVID. I'm like hesitant to say too many things about COVID quite yet. But um, but yeah, calendula is definitely going to be in our kits um, for a long time. And uh, I also don't recommend people use a lot during early or late pregnancy. Um, and just to note that sometimes if you have um, ragweed or chamomile allergies, you could react to calendula as well. Um, so just to start slow and careful with that. Um, also, it's contraindicated for simultaneous use with lymphoma. And um, in terms of preparations, calendula is really resinous, kind of like poplar. So um, tinctures are really um, a great way to extract that medicinal resin um, as our oils. And um, tinctures can are really great topically. Um, of course, we want to dilute them so they don't sting on open wounds. But um, you can dilute the tinctures or combine them with salve. And also just in general, calendula washes and baths can be really nice. And I'm going to try to keep my eye on the chat box in case there are questions. Are the leaves medicinal too? I don't use the leaves of calendula. I just use the blossoms. Yeah. And next I'm going to be... Thanks for watching. I'm Bruna Morshaw of Well Deep Remedies. Leave a comment below about what you learned from this video. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.
Check out the caption for a link to sign up for my mailing list for more free educational content from me, a disabled femme clinical herbalist. The herbal first aid class handouts that accompany these videos are also linked in the caption and available for purchase. Visit welldeepremedies.com for more. Thank you and ta-ta for now. Bye.